So the irony isn't lost in me on a channel called Garchet's Arch. We haven't yet looked at how to install Vanilla Arch. And obviously there is two types of installations for Arch. Well, there's a couple, but essentially there is the old Arch way, or the more pure traditionalist's uh, way of installing Arch, which is essentially going through the documentation step by step, installing it, etc. Heck, it's something I've even done before. I haven't done it for the channel, and I will do that at some point for the channel, but in more recent times, of course, Arch has gotten a bit of a helper library, an installer, which of course automates the basic installation of Arch with, you know, slightly pre-configured installer, and of course it comes straight pre-installed on the Arch ISO, and I thought, you know what, let's take a look at that. So I'm going to spin up a new machine, Arch Linux, Arch, I'm going to give this 4 gigs of memory, 4 CPU cores, 50 gigs of storage, and yeah, Arch Linux. And finish that up. And now we're going to walk through this step by step. So we don't need speech. We're just going to start the main installer. And of course, here I downloaded the normal Arch installer ISO. And of course, uh, this way you can get yourself up and running on Arch. Now, I'm not going to go through every single every single step afterwards what to do here, but this is just to get you up and running. So, uh, if you needed Wi-Fi, you would use the uh, wireless utility IWTL, uh, mobile broadband, MMCLI, um, and of course Ethernet, WLAN, DHCP works automatically provided the networks are already connected to the internet. So here, no more screen. I'm just going to do Arch install. First, it's going to test the connectivity to the servers to make sure you can actually download the files. And here you get this uh, installer screen. So by default, it actually already has quite a lot set. Uh, so you don't have to necessarily go and change everything. Uh, default language is English. I'm in the US, so I'm going to set US. Uh, I need to set the mirror region. So I select it and hit enter. In, I'm just going to scroll down here and say United States. Enter again. Local encoding UTF-8 is normal for the US. And then I'm going to go to drives. I'm going to press enter. And at this point, it's busy scanning the for the hard drive in the virtual machine in this case or on your workstation it would be on the machine itself just to uh, see what's available so that we can move on to the next step okay here it's on the block device in DFDA uh, it's already selected uh, it's got all the free space all I need to do in this case is just press enter okay now it takes me to the disk layout now, basically in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the easy option. At this, I have no dual booting anything, so I'm just going to wipe all the data, best effort, what partition system do I want. In this case, I'm going to choose ext4, I'm going to press enter. Do I want a separate partition for home? In this case, I'm going to say yes for default. Okay, disk encryption, I'm going to press enter and we're not going to uh, encrypt it, so I'm not going to give it an encrypted password. Uh, bootloader, grab install, that's fine. Do we want to swap space? Yes. Hostname, Arch Linux. Uh, give this thing a root password. Well, let's do that. And let me give it a strong password. A user account, so I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to add a user here. going to give this user a password. 
Should they be a member of pseudo? Yes. And confirm an exit. Awesome. Uh, profile. Let's go here to profile. Uh, desktop minimal server xorg. Of course, cool server. You're going to run server stuff. That's pretty much without saying. Minimal install. Uh, xorg. Minimal install with a bit of a graphics drive that's going on there. I'm going to select desktop. Whole range of desktop environments. Uh, just select from here. I am going to choose Kelly. You could choose any of the others. I just, uh, I'm a, I suppose because I'm a KDE fan. And uh, in this case, we're going to have all open source drivers. Um, it is great if we were running this on VMware VirtualBox, we could install drivers there as well. Just press enter. Audio. Uh, you can choose PipeWire or Pulse Audio. PipeWire will be the default. Kernel. We're just going to choose a normal Linux kernel. Uh, we're not going to add additional packages. Uh, network configuration. I'm going to say copy the ISO, network configuration translation. So basically, since it's detected everything now, just copy that and install. If you were setting up wireless or something, you could choose that function. It should copy it over. At time zone, my case, I'm just going to go America. I could search this, but it's just, it's so quick scrolling down anyway, that I can just use arrow keys, America, Los Angeles. Automated time signature, optional repos. Do you want multi lib? Yes. Um, and essentially, that is if I need additional libraries, save the configuration. I'm going to save it all. So it would save it in the config file. Uh, I could save it to directory. I'm just going to press enter here. And I'm going to say install. And basically, pre JSON format of what it's going to do. I'm going to press enter, and you'll see it will automatically now start the process. Uh, really, really great uh, way of installing Arch on a on, on a machine, really. Of course, if you want to have the more intricacies of it. Uh, like if you dual booting, maybe the other way. If you really want to learn about how to install Arch and you want to learn more about how your system operates, then it's kind of a good idea to do the traditional uh, way using the documentation. You're probably not going to get better documentation than the Arch Wiki. Uh, it's just that good. And... Yeah, I see it's still on the mounting portion and creating the file systems. I just want you to see it to get to the next step. Can take a couple of moments. Um, well, for it to carry on, because it has to do all sorts of um, automation in the background, but yeah. What you could also do as well with these configuration files is you could save these config files, uh, save it somewhere, export it, put it onto another machine, slightly change the configuration, and you've got a pre uh, set up environment. Pretty nifty way of doing that. Um, okay, so we can see that it was uh, waiting for the mirror selections. New. Package mode list has been created, and then almost like magic, um, it should start running. Let me just move this time off screen. Okay, and of course, in the background, um, doing all sorts of Mirror testings. Okay, you'll see it's obviously moved on now. Installing packages, so it's going to install the base based 
develop with Linux, Linux firmware, Linux and Grub. I'll pause and come back when it's moved to a later stage. And check here, it's already added the additional software that it's going to need. And you'll see it's just busy uh, downloading from the local mirrors. I'll resume it once it's moved on to the next step. Okay, we at the stages where it's downloading a couple of additional files and enabling different services. Um, already installed a lot of the basics in the background, and now of course um, doing what it needs to do when it comes to start up and shutdowns with the different services using systemd. Um, but yeah, this is really great quick way of setting this up. As you can see, you basically just configure it, hit enter, and walk away. As you can see, as an installer continues to go through, kind of installs in that in that order that we selected. So Grub's been installed. It's already configured the FS tab. Now it's installing uh, Pipewire for audio, and through this it will continue working through, and then it will at some point start installing KDE. What I'm going to do, I'm going to let it run through the rest of this, and then I'm going to resume when it gets to the end of uh, the installation. Okay, so this is continued, and do we want to go to the new system and do post installation configuration? I'm going to say no in this case, and I'm going to reboot this. Okay, so I've removed the ISO, and I'm just going to say false reset, and start it back up. And you can see here, Arch Linux and Grub. So far, so good. And here we go, we have Plasma, I'm going to do X11. There's the account, the account we created earlier. Log into it. And here is a vanilla install of Arch Linux. Just making it dark. There you go. Pure latest installation of Arch Linux. All the base software that you need installed. And of course, from this point, you could carry on uh, doing what you need to do. So let's say if I want to um, go sudo and pacman s. Let's say we want to install NeoFetch. Okay. Install it and bam. As you can see here, proper full installation of Arch Linux, really done easily using the Arch install from the ROMs and a third party runners or additional installation needed. And here, Perfect, beautiful vanilla arch installation. Um, as always, thanks for watching.